What's going on, y'all? It's Brandon Tatum. I'm live again. So, pretty much, I want to make this video because there's a there's a passion within me that some people may not understand. Some do. Some people get it. Uh, some people respect it. Uh, but there's a lot of people that come at me and they wonder, yeah, Brandon, why 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 did you change? Why why did why are you making these videos? What what? You used to you used to be from this side of the hood pretty much and, and, and now you're doing this or doing XYZ and and it's because at some point in my life I realized that I was lied to. Let me let me give let me give y'all a little history about me, just real quick. When I was growing up, I grew up in the hood, I grew up in the suburbs, I went to public school, I went to private schools. I, I, I had a full spectrum uh, of reality. I went. I got arrested when I was real young for smoking marijuana, or detained, or whatever they call it when you're young. I was young, y'all. I'm talking about real young. I was real young. I wasn't even ten yet. And I had a, I had a plethora of experiences. You know what I'm saying? I I don't want to get into all my personal business, but what, I'm just letting you know. I, I grew up. I know what it. I know what it's about. I know what growing up in the inner city looked like. I know what going to growing up in an all black community looked like. I know what going to an all-black school looked like. You know, I went to Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. Ain't not, nothing but black people. A community of nothing but black people. You talking about inner city? You talking about poor? You talking about gang violence? You talking about all this stuff? That that's that's the condition that I was in in high school. Now let's fast forward. All that time when I was young, and I'm not saying this is coming from my parents, because my parents taught me taught me the truth. But you, but you know, you don't, you're not just raised by your parents. You're raised by a village. Growing up, they told me that, you know, pretty much society would tell me that I'm a victim. Oh, the white man don't like you. You ain't never going to be nothing. The white man is going to hold you down. You got to work five, six times harder than anybody else to be somebody in life. Oh, you, 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 you are, you're articulate. You're, you're trying to use proper English. Oh no, you're trying to be like the white man. You, that's what you're doing. I mean, that's white people stuff. That's what that's what that's what I used to think growing. Up. Oh, police! Oh, they hate black people. They they pull you over because they racist. Because you because you black, they pull you over for no reason. That's what they told me. I grew up thinking that. You know, rap music was cool. I love listening to Tupac. You know what I'm saying? I, I love I love listening to this music. They got me all riled up. It reinforced some of these things that people would say. When I went to college, I used to sag my pants. Damn. Freaking underwear hanging out. I had gold teeth in my mouth. I got Young Savage tattooed on my stomach. I know what it's about. And I started realizing when I got to college, like, hmm, I don't really think white people think about black people like they told me. I don't really think they hate me like they say they do. And then I studied African-American studies in college. And I started realizing slavery was a much different than what they told me it was. And, I'm, and I start to put the put the puzzle pieces together and say, mm, something ain't right here. You know, you know what I'm saying? I went to a campus with all white people. It, it was probably 15 black people and we all knew each other. And most of us were athletes. And I started, it, my, the, it started clicking in my mind. Then I became a police officer. And I'm like, dang, well, police officers ain't nothing like they said they were. And then I started realizing the laws and how all this stuff works. And I'm like, well, so that dude didn't pull me over because I was black. He pulled me over because I literally was breaking the law. He didn't even give me a ticket. And, and, and the puzzle pieces started coming together. And just this last year, with the, with the whole Trump campaign thing, I started realizing, like, why, why am I a Democrat? I voted for Obama his second term. Why, why am I a Democrat? Well, well. I believe in Christian values. I don't. I don't believe in, in, in pretty much none of the core principles of the Democratic Party. The Democratic The Democratic Party founded the KKK. The Democratic Party was, was against civil civil rights. The civil rights movement was against blacks voting. I started thinking. Hmm. Democratic people run most of the black communities that I that I've lived in. Hmm. And it's still, I go back home today and the community still looks similar. Still drama, still issues. So what are the, what are the Democrats doing for black people? Hmm. How, how, I, I, I'm, 
confused now. Let me look at the Republican Party and see what they have to offer. What are they talking about? I went to the Trump rally. I realized that the media lied to us. The media is lying to me. And then it started clicking. And I said, you know what? I got to stand up for something because I have been lied to. I I'm not oppressed. You know, it they talk about, oh, you know, white people trying to over incarcerate. Well, you know what? I'm not committing crimes. I'm not a part of that statistic. And I don't have to be a part of that statistic. That's the truth. Well, white people don't like you. And, I mean, you know, it's so many white men and women, I could say, that, that have helped me become successful in my life. And y'all telling me, whoever, who, you know, the, the, the elements are telling me that white people hate me. And that it's all racist. Racism. Your skin alone is what was causing them to not like you. And, and I've had white people do more for me than black people have done. And, and if I want to tell the truth, other than my parents and a few African-American people that I know that was down for me from day one. Other than that, it ain't like that. And I, and I started realizing, well, rap music is poison to my mind. Telling, uh, you know, exacerbating and, and, and amplifying and glorifying being promiscuous, hating other black people, calling us the N word, talking about uh, uh, shooting people up, drive by, selling dope. And y'all told me that was okay. And you lied to me. And I had to come out of that on my own. I had to learn that, no, nah, brother, it, it ain't the way you act. You work hard in this country. You don't hate the flag. What's wrong with you? There's people that look like you and the people that live next to you that fought for your freedom. Harriet Tubman didn't do it by herself. And they didn't, they didn't, she didn't take them to La La Land. Harriet Tubman worked with other people who were white, who had houses, who facilitated the, free, the, the, the freedom of slaves. And not every white person owned slaves. There was black people that owned slaves. And I bet whoever watching this, when was the first, what was the first African-American person that legally owned another black person? Hmm, I'm waiting. You probably don't know. I had to look it up. In 16, like 50 something. Slavery didn't start to like 1612. This brother owned somebody, went to court to retain that person because he that person owed him, owed him a debt, owed him service for life. 1600s. Okay. Thousands of free blacks own thousands of black slaves. But that y'all don't want to tell me that? You don't want to break I didn't I thought all white people owned slaves. To be quite honest, growing up. So they didn't? So only a few did? Oh, there's there's multitudes to slavery. There was plantation slaves, city slaves, which was totally different. House slaves, field slaves, indentured servants. So you're telling me all this can exist at once. Oh, that makes sense. That's why there was a, a, a black judge in the 1800s. That's why, that's why you have George Washington Carver. You have all these other people that were successful during the time period where blacks couldn't even vote in the South. All right, I'm not going to go there. But the, the main purpose of me saying this stuff is that I was the reason I make these videos and the reason I'm so passionate, because I have come out of the lie. And, 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 I, and I really want other young African-American men to, to get on the, the train to get out of that lie that they're telling you. You can be whoever you want to be. You can go as far as you want to go. You don't have to act three, five times better than the white man to be successful in this country. Just do what you need to do to succeed. You study hard. Do the right thing. Show up on time. Do the things you're supposed to do. People will love you because of your character. They don't. And most people don't care about the color of your skin. Are you going to get it done or you're not? Are you going to get it done or you're not? And I love the people like Jim Brown. Uh, um, George, uh, what's his name? George Foreman. And I even, uh, Charles Barkley. These people, they, they get it. They get it. They get it. And the, 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 the older generation of people that I know... And they get it. This new generation is wacky. They, they're victims all the time. They're protesting in no action. They believe in people like Michael Brown and Colin Kaepernick or their heroes. Rosa Parks didn't do stuff like that. 
They took a stand. They said, well, we ain't going to rock the bus. You need us, don't you? Okay, we ain't going to rock the bus. For real issues. They told you you couldn't ride and you, you get to ride in the back. That's real issues. Because you ain't good enough to play with your distractions. Somehow that's an issue in, in 2017. It's racist. That ain't racism. Because you a halfway trash quarterback. And then you got baggage that comes along with you. Michael Vick went to prison, went to prison and got out of play. Why? Because his talent level superseded his baggage. And then he, what he did was he apologized. He cut his hair, he apologized, and he restructured his image so he could do what he needed to do to make money and succeed. But these clowns want to do what they want to do and think somebody owed them something. NFL don't owe you nothing. You don't own the team. You don't own the contract. You don't, they don't owe you nothing. And they're out here protesting, lying to us. Out here protesting and doing nothing. Ferguson, Baltimore, hundreds, hundreds of black people out there. Some of them peaceful, some of them acting a plum fool. What are you accomplishing? Nothing. Nothing. What, what, what is changing in the, in the community? Nothing. Black people still getting murdered by other black people. We're still talking. We're still going to be talking about education system. We're still going to be talking about residency. We're still going to be talking about underage pregnancies. We're still going to be talking about what, what, what's the next issue? Single parent homes. What, what, what has changed since Michael Brown and hands up, don't shoot? Nothing. Nothing has changed. It won't change because you're not doing nothing. You're just talking. You're taking a knee, but you ain't, you ain't making no initiative. Oh, you give one million dollar one time to some charity. Most charities only only donate. What, 1%, 2% of the proceeds that they get in? They donate that. They use that for the cause. They, 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 they hoodwinking y'all. And you got thousands of black people show up in front of the headquarters. We're going to sing the real national anthem, the black national anthem. If that's not racist, I don't know what, I don't know what is. Okay, you can do that. But then what are you going to do after you protest? What are you going to do after you protest? Go protest in the hood. Get four or five thousand of y'all to get together and put two or three dollars together and make sure that your local school has proper books and that the kids have supplies who can't afford supplies. Stop waiting on the government to do it. You get together in your own community and you do it. I tell you what, this school up the street from my house needs some help. People in this community will come together and make sure that school is successful. In, in, these, in these minority communities, I, they, they ain't care about you. How many times I went to a minority school? Now you tell me how many people came in that school and supported us, made sure we had proper books, made sure that crime wasn't that crime wasn't going rampant. People coming to school with guns and stuff, pulling guns on each other in the parking lot. I had a teammate used to bring his revolver to, to practice every day, cause he was a thug. He he really lived that life. He couldn't go without being strapped. And where are y'all at? Protesting about some football player. You ain't in the hood doing nothing. All y'all activists just talking. Ain't no action. Because if there was that many black people in this world that was that concerned, all these NFL players, with all that money they make, there ain't not, there, there's not one minority school in any of these cities that, that have an NFL team or a professional sports team that should go without. NBA players, NFL players, baseball players, Make millions, collectively billions. And you and you telling me that these schools still don't have school supplies. How many times Colin Kaepernick come to your school? He ain't coming to your school. He don't care about you. It's about him. I'm just keeping it real. This video gonna be long because I gotta get this off my chest. How many times does somebody now not, some of them do it? Some of them are going out and doing it. But the ones that's doing the bumping. The, the gums just bumping. How many of them are at your school doing something for you? Nobody. They telling you to knee, to kneel, and they ain't even got no job no more. Instead of telling you to do the right thing. I'm sick of them lying to us. That's why we're still struggling today, because people can't stop lying. They want you to feel like a victim so they can make money in their pockets. They want you to feel like a victim so you can vote Democrat. And they ain't doing nothing for you. How about we talk about the black people that have been successful? Stop talking about these people that's committing crimes and getting shot by police. Talk about the people who overcame. Talk about the black athletes who actually did something positive. Stop running your mouth. 
I ain't no victim. Don't lie to me. You can't lie to me no more. I'm grown now. I ain't no victim. I could do whatever anybody else in this country can do. I could be the president of the United States if I wanted to. If I put in the work, I bust my tail, I'd be the president. Point blank. I can own my own business. I already own my own house. I can do all my other stuff that I want to do. You know why? Because in this country, you're free. They fought for that already. They already died for you to vote. I went and voted. I, I hadn't voted until I was in my 20s. You know why? Because nobody told me that, that voting was important when I was younger. All talk, no action. Nobody vote where I come from. I don't even know people that voted. They were never a big deal voting. You ain't getting nowhere. The white man gonna pick who they wanna pick anyway. You know, you see you vote and they lying to you. Got out and voted. I vote every time I can. I be voting on stuff over here in my community. What? Local stuff? Okay, I, I don't prop so and so and so. I know. Yes. Marijuana legalization? No. Somebody, a bond over here? No. I'm reading this and I'm gonna vote? No. I care about my community. I'm a part of this community. You know what? My vote counts. And I go take my butt out there and vote. You know why? Because other brothers like me couldn't even vote. Dying. Couldn't vote. Couldn't eat the same restaurant. And y'all still trying to drag that stuff over to the future. I can go eat anywhere I want to. I got the money. I can do whatever I want to do. I can fly. I can sit. I can go work. I can, be the, I can own. I can live anywhere I want to live. And you know what? If you don't like me, you take that up with God. I had, a, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to get off here. I had a lady that I respected. I ain't going to call her name out. I know I met her at a conference. She, she, she went through cancer, beat cancer. As far as I know, she beat cancer. Tearful ceremony of celebration. I remember thinking so highly of her. And I'm not saying I just completely disregard her now, but she posted something on Facebook about another black person, grown up, Somebody called her the N-word on a train somewhere. And she crying and it, it just devastated her life. And she stop being so weak all the time. I, you, we, we are strong. We're not weak. You call, I've been called the N-word I don't know how many times. You can get a noose and hang it somewhere. Yo, are you going to hurt me? No. You an idiot. You come on my property, you're going to have a problem. You put me eating lead sandwiches. But other than that, you, your words don't affect me. We, we learned this when we were kids. Sticks and stones may break my bones, words won't hurt me. You can call me anywhere you want. I don't care. You ain't got no power. You're going to be working for me. <laughs> when are we going to be strong again? Words don't hurt me. You can, you can fire me. It ain't going to hurt me. I'm going to get another job. What are you going to do to me? You deny me an application. I go apply somewhere else. I apply to 400 jobs. Somebody going to hire me. And you know what? Then I'm going to own my own business and then I'm going to put you out of business. That's how we're supposed to be thinking. Instead of being a victim all the time. Use your brain. Use your talents to become successful. If you ain't got no money, I went to school for free. My parents didn't pay for nothing. They gave me some money, but they didn't have to pay for anything. I used my talents to get to where I need to go because my parents didn't have the money to send me to college. And waste $100,000 on college. I let my athleticism take care of that. Because that's the position that I was in. That's what God gave me to be successful. Use, use what you got to be successful. And, and let me say this. I'm going to get off here. And you got to start learning how to work with other people. It ain't us against them. It ain't black against white. White against Mexican. It's Americans against people who don't want to do nothing. If you want to be successful... People will stand next to you, whether they black, green, orange, brown, whether they poor, whether they gay, straight. If you want to be successful, people will stand next to you and inspire you. You got to work with white people. You ain't going to make it in this world thinking you're going to be, oh, we're going to have our black only. You only make up like 13 percent of the population and own. I don't know. You ain't owning no wealth because we don't contribute to our own community. We go out and buy J's, putting money in somebody else's pocket instead of us making our own shoes. Making our own businesses in the black community. We get out of there and we gone. You know why? Because there's too much drama in the black community, in the, in the inner cities. I'm saying the inner city communities because there are black communities that are flourishing. I'm talking about the city I grew up in. I never own a house out there. Why? Because you might, I might get robbed. I might get killed by somebody because I'm wearing the wrong colors. Come on, people. That's why 
why uh, these NFL players don't live in the hood no more. They out of there. They can go back and put business. They don't want to put no business there because they can get robbed, burglarized, homicides every day. All right. I think I've done enough rent. This is why I make these videos. This is why I'm passionate. I refuse to be lied to anymore. You're not going to lie to me and push that because I'm a grown man and I can think for myself now. I got books. I can read. I can read for myself what the truth is. I can go to anybody rally and find out what their true colors are. I can do research and look up their background. Hey, what did this person stand for in 2010? I'm a grown man. And that's what every other young brother should be doing is saying, go read for yourself. I grew in the faith because I read the book for myself. I didn't let the pastor just tell me something. And I just run with it. Although my pastor was a great pastor. I, I don't just listen to what you tell me and just run with it. I'm a grown man. I think for myself. Just because every, 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 most black people I know think this way don't mean I got to think that way. Just because every police officer think this way don't mean I have to think that way. I'm my own man. I'm my own individual. I have the power to do whatever I want to do. Nobody's going to stop me. Thank God for my ancestors. Thank God for what they went through and put up with. And thank God for the ones that wasn't slaves and did, and did the right thing and owned businesses and, and created capital. Thank God for them too. And y'all over here lying to people. Ain't about that. Them people that were owning slaves were just as brainwashed as anybody else. The kid, a baby kid don't grow up thinking that they hate black people and that black people should be slaves. I think they were brainwashed. Grown us brainwashing these people. And, 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 and as a Christian, you should feel compassion for the people that was getting tricked to own you. I feel bad for them kids growing up and their parents telling them that they, they should own, that black people were less than human. I feel bad for them. I don't hate them. I feel bad for them. Them kids shouldn't have had, they didn't have to go through that. But they did. And those other white people that are doing just like black people are doing now, they, they're getting tricked. They're telling you you should feel sorry for slavery. Don't lie to these people. You ain't, you, you probably didn't, your ancestors probably didn't even own slaves. And you and you and they telling you because so you so you have this white guilt that you should feel bad for certain people. That ain't true. Stop being stupid and come together for those of you that have faith in God should realize that man, that was a messed up situation. But you know what? We came out of that situation. We are who we are today because we came out of that situation. We, you know, I'm not going to say we needed it because I think we're doing better than people in Africa, I, I, if you ask me. So they took us out. A lot of us suffered. But look at where we're at now. Now we can go back to Africa and create stuff if we wanted to. I'm not saying Africa is all poor because I've, I've seen countries in Africa that are, that are beautiful. People are powerful. But if you hear me out, what I'm saying is that this situation, we learned from it. We came as a country and now we're the greatest country on earth. We have overcome these things. And if we keep going back to the past and crying about slavery, we ain't never going to go anywhere. Slavery is over. Slave ownership is over. Nobody can put us back into bondage. Nobody can lie and tell people they should own slaves and nobody can lie and tell you you should be a slave. Nobody can put you in prison. Don't commit crimes. Do the right thing. You won't go to jail. You won't be a part of the system. Instead of, instead of trying to be a thug and trying to do hip hop music all the time, learn how to budget your money. Go to school and be a lawyer, a doctor, judge. Then you can enact change. Go apply for the police department. Then you can enact change. And let me stop because I can go on for 24 hours talking about this stuff. Anyway. You like the video, share it, whatever. I had to get it out of my chest. It's probably like an hour-long video. But appreciate y'all coming on here listening to me rant. But tell me I'm not telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. And I wish more African-American people would listen to me instead of wanting to argue with me and call me a, a sellout and a coon and an Uncle Tom. Hear me out. I got just as much street cred as anybody else. I've been there, done that. I've been there, done that. I got the tattoo to show it. And you know what? Am I going to be embarrassed by my tattoo? No, I'm not. I learned from that. That's who I used to be. Anyway, appreciate y'all good people. Appreciate y'all the 200 and something that's on watching right now. Appreciate y'all watching. 
I'm going to get out here. I'll see y'all next time.